Let's be honest, everybody knows the name Carlane, and everybody knows these trigonometry table books that they are known for. But today, this thick book of all these components, we're gonna give you a first hand tour of the facility just outside of Austin, Texas with my buddy Rick. So let's head inside and see if we can find this young man. Well, I've made it inside and I've walked through this entire facility that I can't seem to find Rick anywhere. I mean, this place is massive. Oh, there he is. There's hey, the Tony. superhero. Hey, how's Rick. it going? Oh, so happy to see you, my friend. Yeah, I yeah. wanted to showcase this amazing new facility Excellent. you guys are in. Yeah, let's go. And, and we have an audience that's excited because you guys have been around for over 70 years mm -hmm. and they, you have the, one of the thickest books I've ever seen of right? products. And we're all curious on how it's made and how you can keep up with so many products here. I know. Yeah, we do do a lot here. So, yeah, basically it starts in the CNC. Um, so right now we have a lot of Haas equipment. Uh, basically it all starts here. All comes out of bar stock. Well, we were just in the bar stock area, raw material, straight to the CNC. I see that you've invested in a ton of Haas machines, but I'm also seeing a lot of DMG Mori's. We do. What has... And I, if I look at this place, I would make the estimate that maybe 60, 40 of manual with CNC, right? Because yes. you do a lot of job, like one offs, five we off, do. 10 off, right? We do, So correct. it's necessary. We understand it's necessary. But what has the CNC world brought to Car Lane as you continue to implement newer technology like the mill turn that's in the front? Sure. Well, what that does, it helps us reduce cycle time. Uh, the setup times and cycle time in general is cut down significantly compared to where we were at just a few years ago. So. Do you think that this technology is attractive for the youth as oh. well to come in and play these games? Absolutely. I mean, the younger generation, they're used to being on their phone all the time. <laughs> so, I mean, right here, I, you know, they, they pick up on a lot quicker. So it, it is, uh, the learning curve doesn't seem as steep. And we try to break it down as simple as possible for everybody to learn. And that's important to understand because I was actually having a conversation recently, Rick, where someone said, I'm trying to introduce manufacturing to my friends, but every time I do, they walk in and go, oh, okay, I'm overwhelmed. So right. simplifying it makes it really exciting. It does, it does, yeah. And I think you have a young man, we're not gonna actually bring him into the conversation because he's not prepared, but you have a young man over here who I believe has been taking books home, learning. He's what, 21, 22 years old, excited about manufacturing and continues to want to be a programmer and go after the, the more difficult opportunities, right? Yep, that is correct. Yeah, he's uh, picked up on it really quick and he wants to continue his growth in that, that field. Well, I bring that up because we also want to invite all the folks out there as we continue to walk around, Rick. Also the folks out there, that there are so many opportunities, whether it's Car Lane or other places, you guys are hiring. I believe you, in this new building, you've hired 12 to 15 people over we the have. last few months. Yes, we have. Well, we're gonna end up taking a right right here. So now we're more or less in what I would call a manual machine area, but it is very, very significant, very important, right? It is for our product, it is for sure. So a lot of it, what goes into the uh, custom side of the bushing program. Um, so the customers can want one or two of something and we were able to knock that out pretty quick. Well, I, I think that this is important to understand because all the time, every day, um, we talk about, we need to automate. We need to compete on a global scale. We need to adapt. And that's true. It's definitely it true. Is. I definitely do not want to take away from that by any means whatsoever. But it's also very important to understand that it is necessary to keep this type of and these types of people and this type of technology in situations that, look, it just doesn't make sense for me to automate in every place all the time. Correct. It does. Yeah, absolutely. When I talked with Carrie in another video, I had a great opportunity to meet with her, by the way. We talked about 70 plus years with another 70 plus years in the future, third sure. generation company, and how important quality is. I see that you have centered quality here around everything in this huge building. It's because this quality is important. What oh, does quality true. mean to you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is everything we do. I mean, we, we take pride in what we do and we're making sure that we're doing what we're saying we're doing. So. Yeah, all the all the all the machines are wrapped around quality, and everybody centers around it. So, all the incoming inspection and outgoing go, comes from this area right here. I might even say, because this is a little bit, tidbit of information that people may not know out there, you care about quality so much. Your son works in this area, doesn't he? Yes, he does. <laughs> That's, That's dedication to quality is when you bring in family members. You're right. You're correct. <laughs> 
You also mentioned to me you ship about 4,000 or more parts per week on average, right? Um, that's just on the ball lock pins. That's just in ball lock? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. We're shipping probably another 4,000 in bushy. Wow. So double that original oh, number. Sure. Yeah. And quality. So you're doing quality and quantity. Yep. And being able to do both simultaneously, important, yeah? It is very important. You got to have solid processes in place. Well, I'm going to walk this general direction yep. as we talk about this area. And I only bring that up because two things. One, I like these old school machines here. And two, this is the catalog that we're talking about with all the, I mean, look how thick that is. I'm not sure I could finish reading it in a year based on my reading level, but don't tell anyone that even though I'm now on camera telling everyone that. Uh, you have that all memorized, right, Rick? Uh, I try, I try. <laughs> so let's talk about this ball lock, because we just mentioned another sure. 4,000 of ball lock going sure. out per week. Let's talk about the ball lock area. Okay. So over here, we do a lot of our custom uh, small quantity ball lock orders. So it, a lot of uh, manual process goes into it, um, and he's able to get parts out the door as fast as possible. He's, do he's also doing a custom spindle and the shank as well. Can I tell you a quick story while we're here? Sure. So the first machine I ever ran was actually a mop, mopping floors. But the second machine I ever ran after that was a hydraulic press. Okay, I finally started to get into CNC's. This exact hardinge machine, well not exact, because it's probably a different serial number, but the exact style hardinge machine was the very first machine I got to get on and really feel, feel how the parts were being made. You know what sure. I mean? That the depth of cut, the feed rates, and it's, you, you could just feel something being made in your hands, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. these, these are the types of machines I love. How important would you say is, and I say this because we just walked through your CNC department, which is right. millions of dollars of investment, right? Absolutely. How right. important would you say this department is, this area with all the manual machines to the overall car lane success? I'd say just as important as CNC. Yeah. I mean, you, it's without, without this in place, uh, we can't make our product. So, I mean, everybody here doing the different jobs, definitely important. And I would say that your people probably know that about themselves as well. They, they know how important they are. We, we try to make it known. You know, Rick, as we're walking around again, I'm starting to see something that's near and dear to my heart. And it pulls on my heartstrings, and I'm grateful to see it. And if we could have the camera crew come this general direction, you have so many women working here. We and do. women is something we've been pushing for. We talk about uh, uh, if we could invite more women into manufacturing, our skills gap would disappear right away and how necessary women are in manufacturing. You're doing a wonderful job of recruiting. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're at about 40% for the women in the workforce here. 40%, you don't hear, I mean, that's well above the industry standard. It is. What What would you say is part of the inspiration for the women coming in and for you, uh, I would say, inspiring women to come in and work here? Environment, I would say, yeah. Right? I mean, it's more like a family. They they all get together, they like to have cookouts, they like to eat, um, it's just, <laughs> it, it makes it fun for them. And they, they definitely enjoy their time here, which so, is good. You know, you want to, you're going to a place eight to 10 hours a day, you don't want it to uh, drag on, I guess. Oh, you're so right. And retention is something that we talk about often as well, right? How, mm -hmm. And I would say that what you just said is part of keeping that retention, right? Having a good time, enjoying your employees, having a clean environment, uh, being able to have the cookouts. We all like good food, right? Oh, sure. And spending time with each other. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a lot of people here 20 plus years. Um, actually, one gentleman in the back corner, he's been here 49 years. Stop it. So, Oh, well, we got to see that. All right, let's head to the grinding department because I definitely want to see this gentleman you're talking about. Okay, grinding. Grinding is probably more of the finish area, right? We're about it done is. and ready to ship when we get to grinding it as is a general of, rule, right? Yes, yeah, one of the last operations. One of the last operations. So we've gone through this tour, not in a specific order of right. from start to finish, but we've incorporated everything that's going on yeah? yeah so so grinding is it's it's about to head out the door it is yep and does everything get ground or majority of things get ground as it's coming uh, through i'd say 99 percent. wow is it yep. that much yeah man yeah that, that that goes for ball lock pins and bushings as well so we've made it to a honing area right yep and i like these honing machines would you mind pointing out the young man that you just said 49 years is he over here oh he's over here oh we got to take a look at that 49 years these honing machines as well, they're kind of cool. Um, but we must see what hey, 49 Jim. years, 49 years young looks like. Look at this young man. Is You think he'd be willing to just say hi? I, I, he's very personable. What's your name, my friend? Jim. 
Jim? Yes. Pleasure to meet you, Jim. This is completely unexpected on our tour of the entire facility. <laughs> it sure is. Yes. Uh, but we're doing a tour of this entire facility. Rick's been nice enough to take us through the CNC's, through the, the raw material coming in and through each of the departments. But along the way, he goes, you know what? With retention and bringing young people in and 40% women being here and being able to keep people in a positive and caring environment and helping them feel cared about. We got a young man over there who's been here for 49 years. Is that true? Yes, <laughs> it is. Since 1975, June 1st. Well, uh, might I just say in front of the whole world filming right now, you look great since oh, you started that, that long ago. Are you ever going to retire? Only if they force me out. <laughs> I don't think they'll do that at nope. this point. <laughs> what would you say has kept you here over the long term? I love what I do. I love my job. And Caroline has been really good to me. I love what I do. I love my job. We're constantly, I mean, Rick does it. I do it. You've been hiring a lot. We've been giving keynotes. I love my job. What does that mean for someone who's 17, 18, 19 right now that might look into coming into manufacturing? Why do you love your job? Well, I had a great teacher when I first got started and uh, I just followed in his footsteps and just continued all the way until now. I mean, I've just been blessed. It's a really great answer. Jim, I want to thank you for doing this. Honestly, for everyone watching right now, one million percent unexpected and unplanned. Jim had no idea. We did not set this up, right? No clue? No clue. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Rick, let's continue just by finishing right down this aisle sure. if we can. Talk about honing. This seems like one of those jobs where you might have some super soft hands at the end of the day, yeah, yeah. but maybe not everyone wants to do it. You have a whole line of people who are smiling at the same time. They are. Yeah, and they, they stay happy doing it. So it basically getting the ID, the ID of the part, every bushing goes through hone. Um, so right there, she's working on the machine, getting it dialed in for a setup. Um, and they're holding three tenths tolerance all day. Three tenths tolerance and smiling about it. I mean, these young ladies look like they're having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to do, I have to, I have one last request before we yep. close out this tour. When you gave me my private tour before we hit record on this camera, you showed me a jewelry size machine. Oh, yeah. And that was where I started, Rick. Yep. 2000, 1999, 2000, I started in the jewelry world in precious metals. And because some of your hole drilling is so small, you actually have these machines we ready do. to go, don't yep. you? No doubt. Yeah, so right now he's, uh, yeah, you can't even see the ID. That's how That's small, how small it, is. it is. You have yep. to hold it up to a light in order to you see do. it, right? Yeah, no doubt. Well, Rick, you've given us a tour of the entire facility. We haven't gone into too much depth of the parts themselves, and there's a reason for that. It's because if we got lost in the weeds of all the parts, Rick and I would not be able to go home tonight, right? There's that many yeah, parts to talk right. about. Mm -hmm. right. So with that being said, we've given an overview. You're in a brand new building. Do you know about how many square feet you're in? Uh, 55,000. 55,000, so congratulations and kudos to that. Over 70 years, is there any final messages you'd like to offer to the audience? Because you do a lot of custom work here, but you'd like to offer to the audience saying, we're Carlane, we've been here a long time, we're expanding, we're over in India, we're down in Mexico, we sell to all the countries all over the world. We're in St. Louis, we're here in Austin, Texas. Any messages you'd like to offer? Um, well, anytime anybody has a bushing or ball lock need, we're, we're the place to get it. I mean, we, we get it done real quick. And uh, yeah, doesn't matter the size, really. I like it. Any custom, any size, anything you need. This is Car Lane, over 70 years. It's a family owned and operated business, third generation. If you want to know more, go to the website anytime. Google will help you get there. And if you want a tour, Rick, is anyone allowed to come here and say hi to you? Oh yeah, absolutely. He's an open door. He's happy to let you come see as well. So if this is just wet your whistle just a little bit to want to learn more head down to austin texas check out carlane check out my buddy rick you can even say hi to his son because this is a family operation thank you all for watching this is mtd cnc and we'll see you again soon